Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The title message is, Is Your Heart Divided? Is Your Heart Divided? Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The Bible says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful Sunday, Lord, that we get to come to a Bible-believing church that we may get to worship you in spirit, Lord. Uh, Father, we pr ask and pray unto you, Lord, to please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, Amen. that he may preach unto us, Lord, a sermon that will change us from inside of our hearts, that we may uh, try to be pure and holy unto you, Lord God. Please help us. Uh, Father, we pray that you be with any other brethren uh, that's online. Please help them, Lord. Uh, please be with them, comfort them with the Holy Spirit, and the brothers and sisters that are here, uh, the congregation, Lord, please fill them with the Holy Spirit. Please help us keep clear our minds and our heart, that we may focus solely on the preaching, Lord, that Amen. it may help us, yes. for your words are pure words, Lord, uh, like silver tried on the furnace of earth, purified seven times, Amen. which is the King James Bible. Thank you for the preservation of your word, Lord. Yes. We pray unto you, Father, to please protect the church congregation, to please bless the church congregation. Please manifest yourself here, Lord. Please keep any of the spiritual and physical attacks away from us, Lord. Please help any of the brethren that's feeling uh, under the weather. Please be with them, Lord God, that they may recover or any ailments, Lord. And Father... Thank you for sending your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, to live among sinners like all of us, Lord, and to take all of our sins and to, and to wash it away with the precious blood that he shed on the cross at Calvary. Thank you for showing your compassion. Thank you for being the example that we should follow. And we pray for your soon return, Lord Jesus. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Before you were saved, for those of you who received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your heart was solely dependent upon serving your own flesh, the mammon. And after you got saved, now you can serve the living God, the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. You always have to check your heart's condition. Your heart determines the, your spiritual state. It is an indicator, your temperature. If your spiritual health is not good, then it just tells you that your heart, there's something wrong with your heart. You start with your heart's desires. Where's your heart's desire today? You know, Colossians 31 says, you know, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You live a busy life. You have work schedule. You have school schedule. You have a variety of, you know, raising your kids schedule. Everything going on in your life. But where's your heart's desire today? Have you set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth? As you know, earthly things are very fragile. It will disappear one day. Now, Psalms 49, 17 says, For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. Right. You know, your, your wealth, you can't take it with you, as they say. If you strive to live your life to solely make money, then it's going to disappear. And what happens is that you fall into temptations and you compromise. Then your heart will not serve God only. Your heart will try to serve God and mammon comes down to it, if you try to serve God and mammon, and if you don't solely serve God, what are you called, right? What should you be called? 
if you're not faithful to God, then you're not faithful person. Then in a marriage, if you're not faithful, what are you called? You're adulterer. Yes. You're spiritual adulterers, spiritual fornicators. You try to live two lives, and you're caught between two lives, serving God and serving mammon. And you have fears that others will find out. Can you believe it? You know, in any relationship, you can't serve two people. You're faithful to one person. However, if you're caught between the two, then you're always scared that other person will find out, right? right? If that other person finds out, then you fail. You try to love two folks at the same time, but at the end, you usually fail. There's no success trying to be faithful to two sides. That's why the Bible says, you know, you cannot serve God and mammon. So you have to understand and you have to look at your heart today. Where's my heart's desire today? I mean, am I really all sold out for serving God? Or am I actually having that as, you know, my insurance back pocket because I'm going to heaven one day, but my heart's desire here on earth is to try to get as rich and famous as possible. I mean, the Bible says in Genesis 3.19, For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You and I are dust, right? I mean, there's nothing really, really to be proud about us except the fact that we could proclaim and testify that Jesus Christ died for our sins and he saved us from hell. I mean, the Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 24, for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. So you and I have to realize that we have this thing called flesh. We have this physical body that will just wither away. I mean, it's been withering away as you grow older and older and older. And you must realize uh, by now that, you know what? You know, our body is eventually going to devolve into a dust. Then you must realize that I can't waste this time. Because as you waste your time, you're letting your body become weak and wasted. And all those wasted time, you can't go back. Your heart's desire will not help you go back in time. I mean, just think about last year, just one year. Think about all the desires that you had in your heart past one year. I mean, was that to serve God for the whole year? Or was that to serve mammon? Was it to serve something else? Was it to build material things? Was it to build you know, your bank account? Was it to build your I guess, beauty and your looks? Or was it to build your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? How important is re your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ with you today? We talk about it all the time, but how important is it today? You are always occupied with something else. That's a problem. And the Lord Jesus Christ always comes secondary. Then when it comes to this verse, you're serving mammon and you're trying to serve Jesus Christ at the tail end, like at the last part of your priority. And many people will say, my time is very limited. I have a lot of responsibilities. You know, I have jobs, bills, and everything going on in my life. And I can't ignore them all. I mean, that may be true. However, the fact is that if you give and if you put Jesus Christ and his relationship number one in your life, he will give you where we thought to take care of all of your responsibilities. He will help you, obviously. He'll give you strength to do it. I mean, God commands us to fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Then that is your duty, especially after you've gotten saved and trusted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You're supposed to fear God continuously. If you fear something, you're not going to fear the other. That's why it always comes down to, do you fear man more or do you fear God more? We have a lot of worrisome people in the world. You're always troubled with your worries. And what does worry bring? Worry brings fear. 
And what are you fearful of? Is that the mammon? Or is that the Lord Jesus Christ? Is that God who you fear? If you fear God, there won't be worries in your life. Simple as that. But if you do not fear God, then you're going to have a lot of worries in your life. It comes down to who you trust. Is your heart's desire trusting in mammon to help you live a good life? Or is it your heart's desire to trust Jesus Christ to help you live a healthy spiritual life? If you do not check your heart's desire on a daily basis, what will happen? You just live as a spiritual fornicator. Simple as that. I mean, if you don't check, then there's no reason for us to have any kind of conversation. I mean, you're a spiritual adulterer, fornicator. I mean, you're bought with a price. Your sole purpose here now is to serve your master, Lord Jesus Christ. But if you don't serve your Lord Jesus Christ, you know, then what is it? You're serving someone else. I mean, people say, oh, yeah, just because, you know, you don't fornicate it with someone it doesn't mean that you're not cheating on your spouses, right? Why? If you, give a, if you give your heart to someone other than your spouse, I mean, that's still the same thing as, you know, fornicating, adulterous, not maybe physical, but you will eventually turn into physical. Why? Because your heart's given to someone other than your spouse. Your heart is given to someone other than Jesus Christ. Then what are you doing? You're committing a fornication. As a spiritual fornicator, again, the end is simple. You'll never win. You will always fail. The simple matter of fact is that when God put Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 in place is that there are many times, especially spiritually speaking, as Christians, you tend to choose only thing that's favorable to you. If you serving mammon brings more favor to you, you'll serve mammon. If you think that you serving Jesus Christ brings more favor to you, you're going to serve Jesus Christ. But at the end of the day, your heart is divided. And many times you don't remember that heavenly things, if your heart's desires, your affections on things above, they last forever. Amen. Earthly things will just disappear. So if your heart is on something, on earthly desires and on mammon, you just have to remember that it will disappear one day. However, if you have your desire on things above, then it will last forever. You know, 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, for the things which are seen are temporal. I mean, what you see is temporal. Like what you see, I mean, me, your brethren, the pews here, you know, outside, is temporal, right? But the things which are not seen are eternal. I mean, same book, look at verse 19, Matthew 6, 19. The Bible says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So it lasts forever. So where's your heart at? Right? Is your heart at things of the earth? Are you laying up treasures in heaven? Or are you laying all your treasures here on earth? Again, don't mistake this for, you know, I'm going to be out there passing out tracks eight hours a day instead of working. You know, instead of having fellowship with my family, I'm going to be out there witnessing, you know, I'm going to just do this. You know, that's an unbalanced life. We never want you to live an unbalanced life. As Christians, you have to do your best at work. You have to do your best at school. You have to do your best at home. Amen. You have to do your best everywhere. Yeah. And obviously, your priority should be serving the master, Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Then everything comes into place. But however, you have to check your heart. Is my heart divided right now? Am I solely sold upon serving the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is parts of my heart where I want to serve others? If you want to serve others, go ahead. But don't call yourself solely sold out. Because as Christians, when you're put in a spot, you tend to testify against your true heart's motives and desires. You know, do you hear this all the time? Right? 
Are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? He died for you. And many Christians will just, without thinking, they'll be like, yeah, I'm going to die for Jesus Christ. But you're the person who's going to deny Jesus Christ the fastest and the most. For example, if there was a persecution, like in the days, dark ages, and someone, you know, I don't know, inquisit, inquisition comes and kidnaps you, puts you in a dungeon, you know, or interrogation room, and they have a gun in your head, or you've been getting tortured, and they're like, okay, do you deny Jesus Christ? Or are you willing to die for him? Unless, you know, you have been serving the Lord continuously, your heart's desire has been serving the Lord, and your heart's desires are on things above, guarantee you 99.99999% of the people will deny Jesus Christ because they're not ready. People always think that at the, you know, flickering of your fingers in a moment, I could just give all to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't. It never happens. It's always progression. You don't suddenly live like the devil, serving, being a spiritual adulterer all your life. And suddenly, you know, when the persecution comes, you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to choose the Lord instead of everything else. No, you're not. You just doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. It's almost like this. You know, there's a good dog and a bad dog. You fed your bad dog all your life. And you suddenly expect your good dog to defeat the bad dog, which is stronger, bigger. I mean, you can't. You'll be defeated all the time. So in order for you to get to the point where you could honestly say, you know what, I, I mean, you know what, I could say that I have willingness to die for the Lord. Because you can't guarantee anything, but at least you have that willingness and you have the heart to die for the Lord. Why? Because your life exemplifies it, because your life shows it. You always have to remember, just because you listen, just because, you know, your mind and your brain thinks that you could do it, doesn't mean that you could do it. It always has to show in action. I mean, words without action means nothing. Your heart's desire will eventually show up in action. I mean, of course, it has to have a start somewhere. For some, you haven't even started. You don't even recognize it. Man, I've been serving God and mammon for a long time. Maybe at one point, usually when after people get saved, you know, they realize that first love. They appreciate that first love. You're thankful and grateful of that first love. So you're wholly sold out to the Lord. But that doesn't last long for many. And especially when trials and persecution comes into your life, you're like, okay, Lord, you know, I do want to serve you, but at this point, I have to do other things. Then that shows you that your heart has been divided. That's why you have to make a choice. I mean, you and I make a choice. You and I make choice every single day, even right now, every moment. You have to make a choice whom you will serve. I mean, are you going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ at every moment? Or are you going to serve him only when it's advantageous for you? You know, Joshua 24. I mean, Joshua was going through many of these things. Let's turn our Bibles to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. And these are you know, famous passages. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. Let's look at verse 15. We'll start with verse 14, Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. The Bible says, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Many people just do it in motion. Don't do it in motion. Even when you come to church service on Sunday morning, just don't do it out of motion. You know, don't do it because, ah, uh, you know what? Instead of not going to church today, I feel like going to church will be just the best choice. You know, 
It should be a must choice and only choice. I mean, your heart will show. I mean, if you serve him in sincerity and in truth, and if you fear the Lord, you do it out of the heart. Not because, you know, you feel like it. And as Christians, you and I have to definitely get rid of that attitude and thought. I do it because I feel like it. I mean, then you'll never feel like doing anything hard, would you? I mean, if you have to go out there and carry 50 pounds of, you know, rice, you know, and there are 100 bags and you have to do all of it and there's no one else to do it except you, would you do it? No, I mean, if you, 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 your body won't feel like doing it. But if you have a commitment to do it, you'll just do it. Continu continuing, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Spiritually speaking, even though you've seen what God has done, for, done in your life, how much he has blessed you spiritually and even, you know, physically, materially, everything. But you still think about the world. You think about the other side. You think, still think about Egypt. And you still serve. Things are in Egypt. And that's a sad thing to see in Christians' lives that you're still serving things out of Egypt. right? Anything that does not glorify God, I mean, it's not going to be helpful in serving. For example, you know, having a healthy exercise life is good. But if you take over, you do that like five hours a day, and then you neglect other things in life, you know, that's not healthy. You're just serving your flesh. And also, you know, when you say, oh yeah, and I have to work to support my family, but you work excessively and you you know, neglect your relationship with the Lord and you neglect the relationship with your family, that's not really serving the Lord. I mean, there are times where you do have to do it, but that if that becomes your habit and your part of your life all the time, then you're not. Let's go to verse 14 again. And serve ye the Lord. Verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Just how Joshua was telling those Israelites, you have to ask yourself each day, because each day is different. Each day could turn out to be a good day, bad day, you know, different day. So you have to ask yourself today, I mean, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Very famous verse. People, a lot of people use this as their life verse as well. But is it really your heart's desire today? I mean, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Commitment is very important, but does it show in your livelihood? Does it show in your life? I mean, does it show in your hands, in your feet? Does it show in your mouth, in your tongues, in your eyes? I mean, it has to show every single place, not just, you know, your tongue. Because everybody could say things. If you don't want to be embarrassed. I mean, how many of you guys are truly honest enough to embarrass yourself because of your honesty? Very few. I mean, those are the people with character. Joshua already knew that many of the Israelites will not serve the Lord. They'll go back to their old ways, whom their fathers served, their idols, the easier ways, worldly ways in Egypt. But he just put a stake down. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, no matter what. I mean, does... Your family know? I mean, especially head of the households here. I mean, can your spouses actually vouch for you or give a testament for you that, you know what, my husband you know, will actually serve the Lord no matter what? Or if they're honest, would they say, yeah, he's kind of wishy-washy. You know, sometimes he likes to serve the Lord, 
or when the time gets tough, you know, he doesn't really. Because it has to be every part of your life. There's no, there shouldn't be any compromise in your life. Your heart is divided if there's any type of compromise in your life. Yeah. We, we share this all the time. I mean, we don't see what you do at work. We don't know where you go after work. Even your spouses and family don't know where you go after your work. I mean, who knows if you're drinking or smoking or doing drugs? Nobody knows. But if you are going to just serve the Lord, your spouses and your family have a 100% conviction that you won't do it because of your actions. However, if you're like the, some of the Israelites who's going to go back and serve the gods of Amorites, other side of the flood, and in Egypt where they used to dwell, then you're going to do it. But don't think that it's not going to be revealed. Usually, and almost all the time, what your heart desires usually will be revealed here on earth, or else at the judgment seat of Christ at worst. Then who's going to see that? People around you will see it. Then you must realize that just like, you know, Galatians chapter 6, you reap what you sow. You can't hide things. So instead of trying to hide your heart's desire on the wrong things, what you should do is just get right with the Lord. You know, go to the Lord and just tell him that, you know what, Lord, you know, my heart has been divided. I've been a double-minded person. Because unless you make a choice today whom you will serve, you're going to continuously serve both God and mammon. You're going to continually stay as a spiritual adulterer. Simple as that. You know, people hate the term, you know, adulterer and adulteresses, you know, being a cheater. But you are, from a spiritual speaking. Simple as that. And you have to admit it. You know, what's the first step of any relationship getting fixed? You have to admit it. Yes. I mean, if you cheated on someone, just admit it. I mean, consequences will be severe. You have to admit it. But however, that's, those are physical relationships. But spiritual relationships, you never think of it that severe, right? You know, you think that, ah, I just go to the Lord and just say sorry and it's all over. You know? But that's not true repentance. That's why instead of being a faithful Christian, you're always in the middle. Like you're in the middle. Right? You're faithful two days, you're unfaithful other two days. I don't know about you. If in a real relationship, if your current husband and wife and future husband and wife tells you that, you know what? I'm only going to be faithful to you three out of four days a week. Other four days, I'm going to do whatever I want. I might fornicate, you know, I, I might be adulterer or adulteresses, but you have to accept it then would you still marry me? I mean, people will be out of their mind, right? Unless there are cuckoos out there, normal person will never accept that. But you are telling Lord Jesus Christ on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis, Lord, I'm going to try to be, I'm going to stay, try to be faithful to you. But I'm just letting you know, you know, I'm not perfect, so I'm just going to fail. I mean, what kind of attitude is that? It's almost like you're telling your mom, Mom, I know you want me to clean my house. I'm just going to let you know. Like two out of five days, I'm just not going to clean. I mean, of course, you need to be disciplined. I mean, they're not going to like it. But you have to think of your spiritual state more important than anything else. What your spiritual state is will determine how your physical state will be. If you're okay spiritual, if you are faithful in spiritual state, then you gotta be faithful in physical state as well. But if you're messed up spiritually, then you are not going to be well physically. That's why for some of you who have not had a right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ for a long, long time, on a daily basis, it's because you've been serving or you've been trying to serve the Lord and the mammon all this time. You have to give up one or the other. I mean, obviously, you should give up the mammon and just serve the Lord. But if you continuously stay in the middle, you're going to be very, very unstable. 
characteristic of a person who has double-minded, right? De your heart's not decided. What you're going to do is you're going to serve the devil here and there, and you try to hide it from people. And that's what double-mindedness is. You are trying to hide your other side to certain parties, right? I mean, if you're serving mammon, you want, you want to hide that from God. If you're serving God, you want to hide that from mammon. Simple as that, right? James 1.8 says, A double-minded man is unstable right. in all his way. That's why some of you are just unstable. I mean, as a Christian, if you're not wholly sold out to the Lord and committed to the Lord and try to serve Him, because you're going to fail anyways, try to serve Him all the time, you're going to be unstable. That's why you're not peaceful in your heart. Perfect peace comes from being faithful to the Lord. And faithfulness is 100% committed to the Lord. But you're not 100% committed to the Lord. That's why you're unstable. That's why your heart's never in perfect peace. When was the last time you had perfect peace in your heart? Where you could go to the Lord, you could face the people here, brethren, you could face the world. You're just 100% free and you're 100% peaceful. You don't care what attack, you don't care what things you don't have because you trust in the Lord, He'll provide everything. So you got rid of that double-mindedness. Because in book of James 4, 8, it says, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. If you're honest with yourself, majority of the people are always double-minded, even Christians. For example, if you see someone, some brethren struggling, right? And if you see your family struggling, and then you say, I love everybody, I'm not saying that you neglect your own family, but if you have means to do it, would you support the other brethren? Many people would just say like this, I love my brethren, I love my brethren, you know? I love my brethren just like my own family, right? But when situations do happen, when the brethren need help, and I'm not saying you cannot provide help, but you could provide help. Well, you're like, nah. You know, whether it's monetarily, whether it's physically, nah. You know, I'm too tired. You know, my mommy and daddy said, don't help them out. You know, my husband and wife said, don't ever help them out. And you know, my grandma, grandpa said, you know, you just, just stay where you are. Man, that's a double-mindedness. You say you're, you love your brother and you say you're going to help them. You say you're going to be a support for them. You're going to be an encouragement to them. But when the time really comes, you don't do it. It's almost like you're always telling God, you're telling Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I'm going to serve you no matter what. I mean, how many of you have made that commitment? Many, many times, right? At a, after a sermon, after summer camp, you know, after Jubilee, whatever the situation is, you always say, Lord, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm committed to you, I'm going to serve you. But how, many, how often do you just fail within a week's time? How often do you fail the same day or next day? Then you must be honest to the Lord. Lord, I've been a double-minded, unstable Christian. I don't want to be unstable anymore. I want to be single-minded. That's why you must realize that, okay, where is my double-mindedness coming from? Where is it coming from? You have to know the source. And the source is because of worldliness. James 4.4 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, knowing not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Are you a friend of the world? Do you love things of the world? There's, there are necessities in the world that we must take on. But beyond that, do you have love of the world and things of the world? I mean, simple things, right? Entertainment. Hollywood. Do you love Hollywood? 
I mean, do you love, you know, all those things are coming out of Hollywood? I mean, music, right? You know, Pastor Kim always, you know, kicks the, you know, behind of the music, right? K-pop, right? I mean, I mean are you into, like, K-pop? Right? I mean, they're not even a music, right? You know, they're just, they're very wicked, even if you're out there walking somewhere and listening to those things. And obviously, you know, those are like, there's like heavy metal, there's rap, you know, all those things. And obviously, CCM is not a godly music, right? Christian contemporary music, using worldly beats right. to just replace the words. Then think about it. Where am I standing when it comes to worldliness? Am I away from worldliness or am I going towards worldliness? And many times... Worldliness will be involved with money, right? And your physical pleasure. When we do studies in Book of Romans, especially if you want to have victory over sin, you just go to Romans 6 and 7. It tells you. And I've preached on it. I, you know, taught on it. I mean, if you want to live above sin, you have to consider your flesh dead. You have to live above it, right? How are you going to do it? you got to make sure that your flesh doesn't get what it wants. Worldliness comes down to it. If you let your flesh get his way, you're going to become worldly. If you let your flesh try to let it enjoy all the pleasures of the world, you let it win. And that's where your Old nature was just become stronger and stronger, and your new, new nature just becomes smaller and smaller. That's why you have to understand that worldliness is nothing but spiritual fornicating, fornication against the Lord Jesus Christ. If you love the world, forget about serving the Lord. You know, it's better for you to just don't say anything, right? You know, it happens a lot. Well, he says, she says they're Christians. But they, they go to movie theaters, they go to concerts, you know. And that's a part I don't get either. Don't proclaim anything. Don't testify anything, right, you know, to people around you because you become a bad testimony. Right. And they don't want to be a Christian because of your sake, because of your actions. That's why you have to always go back. Every preacher will tell you that you have to go back to your heart state. Where's your heart desire right now? Is your heart's desire to be the best, to be famous, powerful in this world? Is that your heart's desire? I mean, if you do your best and God opens the door and gives you step-by-step step increase, that's great. But there's a big difference between following God's will and trying to have your own will trump God's will. So you have to understand. Think about it. There's a difference between your heart being distressed and there's a difference between your heart being burdened. There's a difference between your heart trying to endure and persevere. Many times your heart is distressed. Again, I mentioned it because you're just worried, worried about worldliness. If you are constantly in worry state, just, just look at your heart. Just go back to it. Who am I trying to serve today? If you're so worried about pleasing your boss, but it's unethical, then think about who you are trying to serve. I mean, if your boss tells you to do things in the right manner, it's not against the company policy and morally, then you do it. If it's hard, still do it, you know. You get paid to do it. But however, they say, oh, yeah, let's have a drink afterwards. You know, you get a, I'll get you some promotions, right? Oh, yeah, you know, let's have a favor, you know. You know, to, let's, let's have a meeting, right, Offside. I mean, they do those things, right? If you desire is to just go up the corporate rankings, you're going to do it. You're going to compromise your relationship with your spouse, and you're going to compromise everything. And the worst kind of go around in the company, oh, yeah, you know, he or she got that position because, you know, 
they're very close to their boss and stuff. I mean, that's not a good testimony as a Christian. But however, how did that happen? Because you didn't say no. Because you had desire to fulfill your own will by being worldly. So you have to understand this. As Christian, man, am I a worldly Christian in any way? If you are, and if you didn't say yes in any way, then you're lying to yourself. Because unless you're perfect Christian, I don't see anybody who's even close to Apostle Paul here. Anybody, right? Then in certain things in your life, you're worldly. Then you have to get rid of that worldliness. You have to do your best because you've lived in that state for so long. You know how hard it is to get rid of bad habit? It's like life or death battle. Just ask people who's been smoking all their life, who's been doing drugs all their life, right? But after you got saved, you actually have a chance. And as a Christian, you're going to fail and fail miserably all the time. But thank the Lord that he has given you grace and mercy to continue. Then you have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, when I look at my heart state, I'm, I'm pretty distressed. I'm worried. I'm not at the right state. And it comes down to not me putting my affections and things above, not being sold out to you 100%, not being surrendering to you for 100%. Lord, I want to get right. Unless you start getting right with the Lord, you'll never change. Simple as that. You could hear this message, you know, you could hear it over and over, but nothing will ever change. And the worrisome life that you're living will continue and continue. Can you imagine if you let other person worry about your faithfulness on a daily basis? I mean, can you really imagine? I mean, those of you, you know, who's been married by now, can you imagine if your spouse always thinks that you're cheating, always being unfaithful to you? But change that to yourself. Can you imagine if your spouse or your boyfriend, girlfriend, your loved ones you committed to get married is always ready to cheat on you and you never know when they're going to do it and it's hidden to you. Man, I don't think that relationship will be healthy. That relationship will be pretty, pretty sad, chaotic, disappointing. You know, that's just a few terms that you would use. If you knew, you know, that's why even people say it like this example, right? You know, in a worldly term. It's better for you to just split and go your own ways than just constantly being unfaithful to each other. But you're being unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ constantly. I mean, almost all the time. And you don't think it's a big deal to you. When will it ever become a big deal to you? I mean, does something really have to happen to you for you to realize that, wow, I've been unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. And my heart's been divided, but I never realized it. Because, again, Lord said that if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And Lord will definitely chastise his child. Which means that if you don't get right with the Lord today, you know for sure what's coming your way. I mean, just, just the examples that you see in Old Testament, when Israelites were unfaithful to God, they were punished. I mean, as simple as that. When you're unfaithful to Lord Jesus Christ, you will pay for your sin. You'll, you'll pay for your unfaithfulness. But when Israelites were faithful to the Lord, Lord God, they were blessed. I mean, they're blessed, you know, beyond human beings' imagination. When you're faithful to the Lord, He'll bless you. I mean, He'll get you through those hard days. He'll get you through those impossible days. But if you are not going to be faithful to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then just know that 
you'll be judged and you have to pay for it. When someone asks a preacher, but I'm, I mean, I was born to fornicate, you know, I was born to be an adulterer. Preacher said that was your old new, but you have a new new. Just serve the new new, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. I, re- I like new stuff, right? People say, oh, yeah, you know, vintage is good. Yeah, for certain things. But, I mean, would you want to use, like, you know, oven or refrigerator from back in the 1800s, 1700s, where you have to find the cold place, you know, to preserve things? Food goes bad, you know. No, you use new things, right? That's what your new, new, your new nature is supposed to do. You keep you new. You keep you good stuff. You keep you updated. Right? No, why, why, why is it that many times you fail? Because you're not updated, right? I mean, nowadays, new cars, if you don't update your new system, like, it goes bad, right? I mean, your Christian life has to be updated on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. It has to be updated with things of the Lord. And in order for you to do that, number one thing, again, you have to choose this day whom you will serve. Such a, you know, cliche statement, but you have to ask yourself today, Who am I going to serve today? Am I going to serve Lord Jesus Christ? Or am I going to serve everything, others? If you don't serve Lord Jesus Christ, you're serving mammon. You're serving flesh. You're serving the world. You're serving the devil. You don't want to live your Christian life that way. Because if you're saved, then you're going to be always, always nervous, worrisome. You've got to be especially unstable. Because if you're honest with yourself, it's like you're walking, you know, on a minefield. You have to get out of that minefield. This side is no minefield. You could have perfect peace when you're walking. Well, can you imagine you're walking the field and there's, you know that there's mines somewhere. You step on it, you're done. Either you die or you're going to lose limbs, right? You're going to be badly hurt. Why would you walk in mind field in your Christian walk? But if your heart's divided, that's what you're doing, right? You're like, oh, I walk there clean, pure for here and there. But many of the days, you're just walking that mind field. You don't know it. You're going to step on that mind sooner or later. An explosion will ha- happen. And once you get I guess exploded, and you know, what's going to be left of you? You're going to lose your reputation. You're going to lose your testimony. You're going to lose your relationship. And above all, man, you're going to regret all those days that you had a chance to get right with the Lord, but you neglected it. I mean, you'll be just down on your face, on your knees, just saying, Jesus is Lord. Lord, you're right, and I've been wrong. If you continue your path that way, that's how you're going to end up. But thank God that you and I, again, thank God for his grace and mercy, you and I can get right with the Lord. Don't let it just become a hearsay. Don't let it just be a tongue, you know, practice. Just do it from your heart. Again, is your heart divided today? Then you must not let it be divided. Give everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray.